From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News special election coverage powered by Platte Valley Companies. Here early, early hours of Wednesday morning. And of course, our top story, President Donald Trump has won the statewide popular vote in our deeply conservative Nebraska as polls closed Tuesday night. But that does not mean that Trump garnered all five of the state's electoral votes. Democratic challenger Joe Biden appears to have peeled off one electoral vote in Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, which is, encompasses Omaha and several suburbs. Well, Republican Senator Ben Sass has coasted to a second term, easily defeating two Democratic challengers in the GOP-dominated state. Sass beat scandal-plagued Democratic nominee Chris Janicek, who refused to leave the race even after his party disavowed him for sending sexually explicit texts about a campaign staffer, as well as the Democratic Party's nominee as a write-in candidate. And over to the House of Representatives as District 3 Congressman Adrian Smith soared to another election night victory after handily defeating Democratic challenger Mark Elworth Jr. This is Smith's eighth term representing the vast 3rd District on Capitol Hill in Washington. And on the statewide initiatives and ballot measures, all six passed. Prop 1 and Prop 2, with Nebraska's voting to remove slavery as punishment for crime from Constitution Amendment and voting in favor of increasing the repayment period for tax increment financing from 15 to 20 years for areas where more than one half of properties are designed as extremely blighted. As far as those initiatives, voters supporting limiting the annual interest charge for payday lending to 36 percent and all three gambling measures passed here in the Cornhusker state. In the only panhandle contested legislature race, incumbent Colonel Tom Brewer defeated challenger Tanya Storer by garnering about 58% of the votes to retain his seat to represent Nebraska's 43rd district in the Nebraska unicameral. And looking at those local races now, and we are going to have some new faces on the Scotts Bluff City Council as challengers Angela Scanlon and Jordan Colwell beat out challengers Robert Franco and current mayor Raymond Gonzalez They'll be sworn in to their new elected positions in January on the Scotts Bluff City Council. And as far as the Scotts Bluff School Board, incumbent Paul Snyder will serve another term, while challengers Scott Rising and Beth Merrigan will join him in a highly contested race. Beth Merrigan, Scott Rising, and Paul Snyder elected to the Scotts Bluff Board of Education. For the Mitchell City Council, very close to call here, Angie Preston has been elected as a city council member. Tim Schneider and Paul Morell separated by just two votes and most likely a recount will be needed in this close race for the Mitchell City Council. Sticking in Mitchell as their Board of Education, top three vote getters getting elected and that will be Brad Helgerson, Dustin Keener and Paul Pieper for the Mitchell Board of Ed. And for the Morrill Village Board of Trustees, top three vote getters are elected. This year it's going to be Paul Adams, Denise Sinner and Neil Hart for your Morrill Village Board of Trustees. And hey, we have a new mayor in Minotaur, Cheryl Spencer edging out Bob Baldwin to be the new mayor of Minotaur after garnering 142 votes to Baldwin's 97. Over in Bayard, their city council race, top four getting elected, Scott Oderkirk, Martin Marquez, Sheila Henson, and Diane Kraus elected to the Bayard City Council. However, in Bayard, their half-cent sales tax initiative faltered. 318 voting against it, only 234 in favor of that half-cent sales tax measure. KNB News Director Scott Miller talked with Mayor Greg Schmall about that. That will be posted on our website later this Wednesday. We'll open Alliance City Council. Top two vote getters this year are Brian Mishnick and John McGeehee, elected to the Alliance City Council. Down in Kimball for their city council race, Gabriel Ingram is your top vote getter. Kim Ballaman also elected to the Kimball City Council. Just across the border in Wyoming, Torrington City Council, Dennis Kelly and Rick Patterson going to serve the residents of Torrington on the city council. Highly contested race for the Goshen County School Board top five going on. That will be Matthew Cushman, Dylan Hager, Carlos Saucedo, Taylor Schmick, and Michael Sussex for the Goshen County School District trustees 
in a race of 11 candidates. And those sales tax initiatives in Goshen County passed as well. One for the sales and use tax and one for the county lodging tax. Strong voter turnout in favor of keeping those taxes going forward. Up in Boxwood County, Hemingford Village Board of Trustees, Linda Novotny, Jake Frost, and Richard Wacker elected to the Hemingford Village Board of Trustees. And for the Alliance Board of Education, it's going to be Jake Sylvester, Shana Brown, and Dave Richling to serve on the Alliance Board of Education. For the Banner County School Board, we have Megan Henderson Allen, Jacob Knob, and Laura Baker elected to the Banner School Board. And just south in Kimball County for your Board of Education, Lanny Little, Albert Hargraves, and Chauncey Peterson elected to the Kimball Board of Education. Up in Sioux County for their Board of Education, it's going to be Judd Scabdall, Sean Wedham, and Jolene Falkenberg for the Sioux County Board of Education. And in Layton, Susan Ernst, Roland Rushman, and David Wiedemann elected to serve on the Layton School Board. Well, for the Scotts Bluff County Airport Authority, it's Don Wolf getting more than 800 votes over Joe Nichols to serve on the Scottsbluff County Airport Authority. Don Wolf defeating Joe Nichols. And looking at the retaining our judges measures, all four judges that were up for staying on the bench are staying on the district court side. Both Judge Andrew Miller and Judge O'Gorman strongly voted to retain their bench seat. And on the county levels, both Judge Kristen Mickey and James Warden also strongly voted to retain their judgeships. And of course, all of these votes have to be certified by the canvassing board before they become official, but you can find all of their results on our website at knb.com. Shortly before 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning after a 20 plus hour workday, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying with us. Good night, everybody.